Hi there, this is Larry Graves, and welcome to part two, dealing with depression. I guess I shouldn't smile. First of all, I want to say that in no way do I have the answers. Maybe I can help one or two of you out there in some way, in some small way, but I am not an expert in depression. Some of the things I I suggest or say could be wrong. This is just from my experiences. Now hopefully you've seen part one of this. If not, you should actually watch part one before watching this video because I'm kind of explaining the uh, videos that I posted in that video. Do that now. So after my marriage breakup, March of 2012, it's almost like, you know, you're in a state of shock. Plus you're sad, depressed, whatever, just not good feelings. And I will say this, I, I've always loved animals and I'm a very lucky person that even though I was alone, I had my two cats and they were truly God sets. I remember one or two nights in particular early on in the marriage breakup where I was laying in bed and just very upset and I ended up, I'm not, not that I'm even a religious person, but I'm spiritual. And I just said, God help me. And right after I said that, one of the cats came up and sat on my chest. And that was just I will always love my two cats, for the most part, except when I have to feed them. And what, what is kind of funny when, you know, you're, you're trying to survive, even right after the breakup, I was kind of, in a way, fighting for myself because I went on Plenty of Fish, the dating site, uh, soon after the breakup because I'm not the one that broke up. Right? So, uh, and a lot of people are going to say, well, that's way too early. And of course it was. But I guess it was me trying to say, you know what? I am a good person. I'm deserving of having someone in my life. But that was definitely too early. And, and the one thing that is kind of funny is, is even when all of this happened, I still continued with my YouTube comedy videos. I was still being pretty creative and I never gave up on that and I think that kind of helped a little bit, you know. I didn't just... I didn't dwell on the sadness all of the time. I mean, there were happy times occasionally. And I stayed in contact, obviously, with the family. And as I mentioned in the other video, where I was thanking my Facebook friends, I know a lot of people put down Facebook, and I put down Facebook. I still occasionally don't think it's the greatest thing. But you know what? At that time in my life, there, there was a lot of... I got a lot of feedback from friends on Facebook that really did help me. There's a lot of good people up there, so that definitely did help. But the main thing is, is don't shut yourself out. That is number one. Be open. If you have family and friends nearby, talk to them. Don't close yourself up. So in March of 2012, marriage broke up, and then... The last couple of weeks I was at the rather large house that we had, I was all by myself, and that was depressing. <laughs> and then I moved to this small apartment. It's a nice apartment, though, but it's a one-bedroom small apartment. And it was nice, actually. Uh, I've always felt comfortable in this apartment. But I basically, I, I was not working. And my only income was a little bit of income from YouTube. 
I did have money in the bank, but through the months, of course, paying the rent and food and everything, it started to go down. And it was to the point where I had to get out of my depression or my sadness. Sorry for the interruption, that was my landlord. He likes me because I pay my rent every month. So there, there came a point when I was here that I realized I need to do something because I'm running out of money and even though I'm, I don't want to leave the apartment and face the world, I have to. And at the same time, on Facebook, I, I think yeah, there was a posting, uh, somebody was looking for a person to act in a local stage play, a, a comedy play. And I'm thinking, you know what, I've got to start, you know, I'm starting to realize I need to do things. And I said, you know what, I've always wanted to act on stage. I think I could be a good actor. I'm going to try out for the role. Of course, I didn't even have to try out for the role because they needed this person desperately because I guess the other person, I don't know what happened, quit or whatever. And so I started rehearsing for this play called Remember Me. And I soon realized that I had a hell of a lot of lines in the play. In fact, I did not think I could do the play because I, I don't have the greatest memory to begin with. But what I did was I got the, the uh, script for the play, I took it home, and using an audio program I have called Acid Pro, I would re record the whole script, all of the voices. I, I, when I would do a woman's voice, I'd be, you know, high-pitched and all that, and, and then I would leave out my lines. And so I, I would play this track over and over and when it came to my lines I would you know read them out and then very very slowly through in in a few weeks I started to memorize my lines and so we would rehearse and at first oh man I sucked in fact one of the other actors in, in the play Jeff my friend on Facebook he later told me that he didn't think <laughs> he didn't think I was going to be any good. But you know what? We did I think seven or eight plays in front of audiences, and each one got better. The last one was almost perfect. I think you know there were almost every play I made some kind of mistake. But you know what? Even the seasoned pros made mistakes and so I didn't really feel that bad about it. There, there was the one, the one night when I forgot this rather large <laughs> chunk of the script and so the other, the other woman act, act the, the other actress kind of panicked, whoa, she had to be somewhere else. <laughs> but you know, yes. It got me sort of out of my depression, being more social and actually talking to people besides my family. And I was proud of myself. I did something which is what you have to do if you're depressed. You have to get out of your house, get out of your apartment, even if it's just to go for a walk. Get out and do something. Get a job. Talk to people. Get a cat, get a dog. Well, make sure you get a job first. And in the previous video, you see me inside my car and I'm talking about applying for this job. And it was at this temp agency called the Deco. And that very day, I went in and I talked to somebody. And I had a job that day. And I started working the very next day at Procter & Gamble as a temp worker. Full-time hours. And that was pretty rough on me for, for two years because they were 12-hour shifts. 
and it was shift work. So there'd be times I'd work three 12-hour shifts in a row, be uh, 7 p.m. to 7 in the morning, or 7 in the morning till 7 at night. And But that toughened me up a bit, and uh, once again, I was proud of myself for, for doing that. And also in the past, uh, over the past three years, I've dated many women. Not that I'm a stud muffin in real life. You know, some of them would be just one date. Some of them would be two dates. Some of them would be a couple of weeks. Uh, one or two would be a few months even. And uh, there would be, be women that I really liked, and then they they didn't necessarily like me as much, and so they would say, you know, you're a great guy as usual, or whatever, but, you know, they didn't want to date me anymore, and that would hurt at first. But now, <laughs> you know, it could still happen, and I'm much stronger now. In fact, the last serious girlfriend I had last year that some of you may remember, it got serious quickly, and I really did love her, and at least at the time she did love me, but it didn't last. Uh, she broke up with me with a text message. But, you know, it, it was sad, but I didn't really get that upset about it all, because I'm a much stronger person now. I've realized you have to at least like yourself. And if somebody else doesn't like you or love you, that's their problem. Uh, so I'm totally fine being alone. In fact, I think it's like 50-50 if I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. Uh, I would love to have, you know, a partner for the rest of my life, and I'm hoping that happens, but if it doesn't, I'll be okay. So, I guess I'll end this with saying if you feel you are really depressed, perhaps see a doctor. Talk to a doctor. Although, when I say that, sometimes doctors just throw you drugs, which I don't think is the answer. But definitely talk to people that you know. Don't stay alone. Reach out to people, because people do care about you. And go out and do things. Even if, like I said, it's simply going for a half hour walk. That is going to help you mentally. And I'll just end this by saying, you know what? It's okay to be sad. It's okay to even be depressed. Because then when you're not depressed and you're happy like I am, you're going to realize you know, the difference that things can get better, and they will. You just have to, you have to believe in yourself. That's it. You have to, it, it might take some time, you're not gonna just wake up and think the world of yourself, but, like I said, do things, and you slowly will improve. Thank you for watching. I have no idea if I'll do more in this series. If you have questions below, perhaps I can make another video and answer some questions. Uh, but like I said, I'm no expert. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.